Welcome to this tutorial for introduction to graphics in the processing programming language. So processing is a fundamentally graphical language, it's, it's there to draw pictures for you. It does a whole lot of fancy things including a lot of fancy moving graphics but for this little tutorial we're just going to be working in static mode with a, um, a single static image. So the first thing we need to do when we're creating a graphical image using our programming is to create ourselves a canvas. Now, as we would have seen from the earlier programming tutorials when we were working with the console, a graphical window will be brought up for you every time you run a program, but we want to get some control over it. So the first thing we need to do is specify what size that, pro that canvas should be. So we type in a command called size, and inside that size command we specify two numbers. The first is the width of the window, so say we want 800 pixels wide, now we, we do work in the units of pixel which is a dot on the screen so say 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels high and we'll see that our error messages there have gone away so when I push play on this program we'll see that a window comes up that is 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall so that's a pretty boring drab grey window so maybe, maybe we want to make it a different colour so well, let's give it a background. So this is a specific command in processing that will paint the entire um, canvas a specific colour. So we can specify colour a couple of different ways in processing. There are actually quite a few different ways, but two main ones. So if you want a grey scale, so if you want something between black and white, then we just put a single number into those brackets. So if we wanted to have, say, black, we could put zero and we get our black window, or if we want to have white, we use 255 and we get a white background, or something in between, so if we wanted to have say 80, that should give us a fairly dark grey there we go, dark grey, so we can use a single number to get a, a grayscale colour but more commonly what we want different colours to that, so we use what's called an RGB, a red, green, blue colour specification so we just put in three colours into this um, pair of brackets. The first one is how much red we want, so if we want 255, so we want lots of red, and say no green and no blue. So when we're passing numbers into any uh, command in processing, we always just separate out those numbers or other types of data with commas. So in this case, red, green, blue in that order, we're specifying red, with no green and no blue. So this is 255 is maximum red. So we should end up with a purely red window and there it is. And we can play with those sort of numbers. Um, so if we wanted to have red and blue mixed up we should get a purple colour there. Oh, magenta, sorry. And we can get whatever colour you like there. So I might make that a white again so of course if we specify all three colors at maximum we do go back to a white color so now we've created a window we've given it a size and we've given it a color so now we maybe we want to put something onto it so it's something to remember when we do have our processing window is that we can specify a location on this window um, using two numbers the first one is how many pixels across from this top left corner and the second number is how far down from the top. So I can specify, for example, I could draw a rectangle. Now the command for rectangle is rect, and rect requires four numbers. Now there are a few different ways of specifying rectangle, but the default way is to have the first two numbers being how far across and how far down the top left corner is. So say we want to have it 100 pixels across and 50 pixels down. So that tells you where the rectangle is, and the next two numbers are the width and the height in that order. So we want to have, say, 40 pixels wide and 80 pixels tall. So what this will do is this will draw a rectangle where the top left corner is 100 pixels from the left of the window, 50 pixels from the top of the window, it's 40 pixels wide and it's 80 pixels tall. Let's see how we go. So we have ourselves Let's just go through these commands and see what it's done. It has created a window that is 800 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. It's painted it with a background of white. 
it's given us a rectangle which is 100 pixels across, 50 pixels down, 40 pixels wide and 80 pixels tall. So with a white background and a white rectangle that's pretty boring. So let's make the rectangle a different colour. So to do that we have three main colour specifications or colour places that will specify colour in processing. The first is the background that will just paint the entire canvas with one colour and the other two are effectively what colour we dip our paintbrush into. And we have two paintbrushes, one that we paint the inside of a, a an object or anything we draw and that is called fill. So when we specify the fill command it doesn't actually do anything yet, all it does is effectively dip our virtual paintbrush into a particular colour. So if we wanted to have say everything filled in blue we could specify that we want zero red, zero green and all the blue. So now when we draw our rectangle it will be filled with blue, I hope. There we go. So we can see that the rectangle is filled with blue. It is in fact still outlined in black, it's just a little hard to see with the line being so thin. So the other place we can specify a colour, or the other kind of colour we can specify, is the outline colour, and that's called stroke. So I can specify a different outline colour by specifying stroke, and I might decide I want to have a green outline. So zero red, all the green, and zero blue. Uh, rather than these extreme colours I'm specifying, you can look up various lookup tables on the on the internet and see a whole range of different colours with their RGB values. I might put a um, a link to one in the uh, information about this video. So now we have a blue filled green outlined rectangle, and you can vaguely see there there's a green outline. But let's make that outline a little bit thicker just so we can see it more easily. So what we do with that is we can use another command called stroke weight. Now one thing to note here, when we're spe um, using multiple words in a single command or a single variable, the convention in processing is that you don't capitalise the first letter, uh, with a couple of exceptions, but you do capitalise the first letter of every other word in however long your, um, your command is. So in this case, stroke weight, we capitalise the W of weight. And we have a look at how many pixels wide we want our outlines to be. In this case, say we want to have five pixel wide outlines. So when I specify my, when I run my program again, I can see a nice wide outline around my rectangle. And we can see that green colour we chose showing up quite clearly. So now what we might want to do is, I don't know, let's draw ourselves a different shape. So we'll make a different shape in a different colour, so I'll just copy stroke and leave, leave the stroke weight where it is, but I will specify another fill colour. So now it's, it's interesting to note that, um, actually before we do that, let's, let's draw a circle. So to draw a circle, we draw an ellipse where a circle is an ellipse that has the same height and width. Now when we're specifying our ellipse, our, we, it looks similar to the command for a rectangle, we give it four numbers, but those numbers are across and down locations, so in this case we might want to say 200 pixels across and say 300 pixels down, but where the rectangle is specifying the top left corner, the ellipse is specifying the centre of the ellipse. And then as with the rectangle we have a width, Let's give ourselves 100 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall. So when we run that, we can see that the program has the fill. It specifies all the setup here. Then it draws a rectangle, as we've previously described. And then it goes on and draws an ellipse. Remembering that this paint, the, um, the virtual paintbrush is still dipped in the same paint. So when it draws the ellipse, it draws it with the same parameters, the same colours and the same line thickness as it drew the rectangle. And we can see here we have the centre of the ellipse, 200 pixels across, 300 pixels down, the ellipse is 100 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall. So if we want to specify a circle, we just have to have the height and width of the ellipse being the same number, and then we get ourselves a circle. So if we want to have the ellipse done in a different colour, 
then we can simply specify a new colour between where we spe um, call the rectangle to be drawn and where we call the ellipse to be drawn. So say we want to have the circle, let's make it red. So I'll make it a red circle that is outlined in blue. And there we go, we have two different colours, one for the rectangle and one for the ellipse. Now if we don't want to have an outline for the ellipse, and sometimes you'll want to draw your shapes without outlines, particularly if you want to combine various shapes into a single combined shape, we can turn the outline off. Now we could specify stroke weight of zero, that would in fact give us effectively no outline. And we can see the outline for the circle is in fact gone. Or you can use a spe another specific command called no stroke. Now when we call no stroke, we still need to put the brackets here, even though we're not actually passing any information into no stroke, because there's only one way to do it, is to specify the stroke with the zero. But because we're making a specific command that's built into the computer, we still need to put the, put the brackets here and we'll see that that will behave exactly the same way as specifying the stroke weight equals zero. So there we go, a basic introduction to processing graphics where we can set up a window, specify its size, put a background in there and then draw a rectangle and a circle and specify a few different ways of specifying the colors in there.